on today's show. Did the Pacers blow their chance to beat the King? And why are the new Raptors playing like the old Raptors? We debate if the Celtics or Bucks are in control of their series and whether the Blazers should blow it up. And Lance walks right into a brand new edition of Weekend Whoopsies. It's Monday, April 23rd. The starter starts now. Good evening, sweet world, and welcome to The Starters, presented by Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey. Whether you're joining us live right now on NBA TV, watching later on YouTube, maybe listening to the podcast, doesn't matter. We're happy to have you. I'm Jay Skeets, and alongside me, as always, that's Tass Mellis. Gosh darn it, thank you for joining us. To his right, the international man of mystery, taking it to the max, Lee Ellis. Friend. Lily. Mm, Lily, and last, certainly not least. Over yonder, that is the bearded one, that's Trey Kirby. Hey! Hey, yo! TK, what's up, man? Well, I'm here at the internet looking for your best tweets at hashtag the starters. And guys, Giannis Antetokounmpo has had a few dunks on the Celtics this season, and he added to that reel yesterday by crushing one on Al Horford. Afterwards, Giannis hit the tough mean mug. Really tough. Looking super tough. Not super tough, but it's pretty funny because his former teammate Jared Dudley said he used to practice that mean mug in the locker room. It's like a real life little giant situation. And it brings us to today's question, who would be the best mean mugging mentor? For instance, I got lessons from Kendrick Perkins a few years ago, and I'm kind of assuming that's why the Cavs brought him back to pass down his secrets, but probably the best in the league right now is Russell Westbrook, good guy to learn from. Or you could maybe learn the Kobe Bryant underbite mean mug, a rare Hall of Fame mean mug. Outside of the NBA, Rowdy, Ronda, Rousey has to have the best mean mug in the game. Or you could just find a toddler to show you how to mean mug. As you can see, my daughter here looking super, super tough. That would strike fear into the hearts of any opponent out on the court. But we want to hear from you, so let us know on Twitter who's the best mean mugging mentor. Send us your best tweets to hashtag the starters. We'll hear from you later. All right, get those tweets and those picks, preferably in. We got a fun show tonight. We'll uh, debate whether or not the Blazers should blow it up after getting swept by the Pelicans. We'll debate whether the Spurs can avoid the gentleman sweep after they've extended their series. We've got new weekend whoopsies. We have a very controversial, very solid play. Mm, you want to stick around for this okay, one. Okay, can't wait. But we start <laughs> with a little true or false. It's playoffs edition, of course. TK, you got the true or false questions. We'll debate the answer. All right, after dropping game three, the Cavs came out blazing in game four, eventually stretching out a 16-point lead in the first half. But then they blew it, kind of as the Pacers were able to claw back and take a lead late in the fourth before some timely Kyle Korver threes sealed the W for Cleveland. The Pacers were this close to a 3-1 lead, so true or false, the Pacers blew their chance in this series. It's over. I think that's true. You think it's true? Yeah. You can't give LeBron two chances in a first-round series. You, you just can't. This is what they got home court advantage for when the Pacers stole it from the Cavs, to be up in the fourth quarter, six minutes left, and to close it out. And a lot of clanks happened. I don't know if it's just a difference between winning game one and winning game four in this series, but I think that's it. Right. I, I think you, you don't go like back to game chances. five. Yeah. It's like the Bulls a couple of years ago when they got up 2015, when they were up 2-1, it was the David Blatt shot when LeBron mm -hmm. said, uh-uh, I'm shooting yep. this ball and he hit that game winner, tied it up at two. They went on to win the next two games. You just can't give him another chance. You come at that king, you best not. Miss. Yeah, you agree? the Pacers won game one in Cleveland. That was the one game they had to win in Cleveland if they are going to close out the series. Because we all think if they were going to do it, they had to do a game six at home. Now, LeBron, they have to beat him twice, including beating him once more in Cleveland. Right. And, and it has to be game five, right? It has to be. has to be. They're not winning game seven in Cleveland. So um, things were looking so good for the Pacers. Very impressive win on Friday night to go up 2-1. And then last night, you talked about they had chances to get in there. But even Victor Oladipo, who's been fantastic, he couldn't seem to hit a shot even when he was back home. And I think that's one of those situations that the Pacers are going to probably look back at and think, man, we were this close to beating the, the Cavs. I mean, look, the Pacers could still extend this series. There's no doubt about it. They've been playing really well. But you just yeah, feel now their chance to win the series. Yeah. If they had to only beat LeBron once out of three remaining games, perhaps they could do it. Now they've got to beat him twice in three games. I just think it's going to be too much for them. I mean, it did take LeBron playing 46 minutes to yeah. you know, give the Cavs a very slim Game 4 win. But all the other things that were happening with the Cavs, when you look at that Game 4, it really did scream all the Pacers should rally again and try and get this win. You know, you had Kevin Love going 2 of 10, 5 points. I think that injury is coming into play with him. Ronnie Hood, still on a milk carton. We don't know where he is. Tristan Thompson, we talked about him maybe getting some minutes. 
He got some. <laughs> Didn't do a whole lot. Set some picks. Yeah. And outside they that, were I mean, plus seven in those Kyle ways, Korver. They found the guys that they needed. I yeah, think. yeah. Well, and that Kyle Korver was huge, huge. Those two threes late in this game may have may have saved the Cavs season because we were just got done saying you go down three one, that might even be too much for a LeBron team. Yes, he's done in the finals, but that's a lot to ask yeah. with this squad right now. So and, when, and, and I should throw in there George Hill not even playing. So that may have been the one they just sort of went ice cold at the wrong time. Yeah. Both Oladipo and the Pacers down the stretch. Mm-hmm. In the words of the great Ralph Waldo Emerson, when you strike at a king, you must kill him. Wow, you got a lot of king quotes here. Yeah, I was going to do them back to back. It would have been funnier, but it didn't work out All that right, way. All right, so okay, we tend to agree on that one. Trey, what's the next one? Shout out to Ralph Waldo Emerson. <laughs> Anyways, just when you thought it was safe to trust the Raptors, they turned back into the old Raptors. Following a Game 3 defeat Friday, the Raptors lost Game 4 after blowing a 14-point second-half lead thanks to some cold shooting, questionable lineups, and the untimely return of ISO ball, just like old times. True or false, the Raptors beat themselves in game four. Hmm. It's true. Yeah, yeah. It's true. Yeah, it's okay. true. But this is the Raptors. Come on, were you shocked? Yeah, a little bit. Really? I was, because here's why. Here's the, the dirty little secret with the Raptors, despite winning 59 games. They weren't good in crunch time. They just weren't. The good thing is they didn't have a whole lot of games in crunch time because they had that awesome bench and blew out a lot of teams. And that's where I keep looking back at this game four and this loss to the Wizards. Okay, the game three, yeah, Wizards are fighting for the life. You get that one. Okay, chalk up a bad win, a bad loss if you're the Raps. But game four, they should have been up 20, 25 points in the first half. They could have built that giant lead. And yes, it's a game of runs, but built that giant lead. Instead, they turned the ball over 11 times in the first half. The Wizards were sticking around. And then they got the lead right, or they got right back into the game in a matter of minutes after hitting some threes. I think they're going to look back at that first half and go, we could have buried them. We could have buried them, and we didn't. Mm. And they were some sloppy, sloppy turnovers. I want to give credit to Wall. I want to give credit to the Wizards for fighting. But there were some where just the balls thrown at the feet, missed the guy in the corner, just sloppy play. And Casey talked about it, and I think that's mm. what ultimately got them in the end. And now we can get into the whole ISO ball, and it reared its ugly head again. But... They shouldn't have been in that position, I guess, what I'm getting at. It was the worst possible scenario for the Raptors. Up eight on the road in the fourth quarter. Beal goes down. Chance to go up 3-1. And now the Raptors have a must-win, game five. There's no doubt. This is a must-win game for them. Even though game seven, in theory, is home. If they lose this, then they have to go to Washington and win. And then come back to Toronto and win. And that, and that is just the demons of the past. They're going to come back to haunt the Raptors here. But let's give credit to John Wall. Because when Beal went out... John Wall took over. Yeah, he did. He, he did. was fantastic. And that's really the leader of his team standing up and doing everything. He was either scoring or involved in pretty much every play down the stretch, getting interceptions. And he hasn't had a great series because he's still a little bit rusty, I think, from that injury. But the aggression he showed, the fact that he d was determined to take his team, I think uh, the Raptors did play badly, but I think a lot of that was the fact that John Wall put so much pressure on them defensively and on offense because he was there ready to go. So it was a, a great win for the. If you're a Wizards fan, that was a really solid win. Yeah, and they were 6-0 and at home in two playoff rounds last year. They didn't lose a, a home playoff game. And the Raptors just have never dominated a playoff series. And, and yeah, it sure felt like coming into this postseason that it would be different. But you're right. You know, coming down the stretch of games, they got back to that isolation right. ball during the regular season. So it's not incredibly shocking. Maybe they let off the, the pedal a little bit when that Bradley Beal foul happened and he got fouled out and they said, all right, we got this, baby. How the heck are we going to yeah. lose this thing? Uh, but when you're on the road in the playoffs, you got to take it. You can't just let it yeah. happen to you. And it's 2-2. Two -two. I'm just not shocked. <laughs> I'm, well, the Raps have surprising. been in many best of three series before, as we yeah. know. And here they go again. Wait, very quickly before we move on, what do you think about Casey sort of going away from Jonas Valanciunas, who was playing like a monster in the first two games, putting up 14 and 12, shooting 70%. There wasn't really an answer from the Wizards with him, but he's gone away from him here, especially in those games three and four on the road. Yeah, but he hasn't played a fourth quarter in any of the fourth, right. four games, not one single minute. So if they close it out, are we talking about it? It's just a hindsight thing, I believe. Listen, it's it's totally understandable to look at Jonas Valanciunas and think, the Wizards do not have an answer for him. I, I, I totally agree with that. The way he's playing now, the way they've gotten him involved at the high elbow, at the elbow getting him touches, he looks like a totally different yeah, player this yeah. year. So he's not the old Jonas Valanciunas. Maybe instead of Fred Van Vliet, they should have decided, hey, maybe we go big. Yeah, but they possible. continuously go small. That being said, I don't think that was the factor that made them lose. It was... Poor shot selection was the main part. All right, Trey, final one. All right, when we left on Friday, the Celtics were leading the Bucks 2-0, and Eric Bledsoe had never heard of Terry Rozier. Now we're back on Monday looking at a 2-2 series after Jabari Parker balled out for the Bucks in Game 3, and Giannis won Game 4 with a late putback. Sounds like we got all sales a series. Yeah.
True or false? The Bucks are in control of this series. Well, it's false still. Yeah. I mean, the Celtics have still got the two games at home if needed, and the Bucks have obviously got the one. But all the Bucks did basically is what the Celtics did at home: play hard, win really well, win, win good solid games. I like though the addition of Thon Maker into the lineup because he gave them that defensive energy that they've been missing. And Giannis can't do everything. He can do everything, but he shouldn't be relied yeah. upon to yeah. do everything. And Thon. Again, when he got his chance on offense, he knocked down some shots as well. So that can just change a series when you've got a guy out there who makes changes, plays defense, gets his shots when he wants, gives that team the energy boost because outside of Giannis and Chris Middleton, they weren't getting much from anybody else. Delhi had some important minutes as well for them yesterday. So I thought the Bucks did what they have to do, but can they take that on the road and win one? That's the thing. They've been close, and certainly in game one, I'm not sure they can uh, steal the series, though, from Boston. Yeah, you just think that the team with home court advantage is probably going to win a lot of those role players. Thaw Maker, even Jabari Parker gave a lot of good mm. minutes on the defensive end. But what happens when they go go to Boston? Right. Boston shot a bad game, and they almost snuck this one out. I think they're the favorite going forward. The Bucks have to show that they can do it on the road. Good news for Celtics fans heading into a Game 5. Marcus Smart now listed as questionable <laughs> coming back from the hand injury. We don't know if he'll be playing in Game 5. He says he definitely wants to be back for Game 6, mm. and we know that's a go now. So maybe that even sort of tilts this yeah. series in the Celtics favor because it feels that close and these games and, and and Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum I mean this is this is incredible what they're doing especially mm -hmm. Jalen Brown in this game four that was an unbelievable performance from a second year player and it's awesome that he's getting these reps yeah. it really is you know Celtics fans wish they had Gordon Hayward and Kyrie Irving playing I get that because then they would be Eastern Conference finalist potential type team and they might still be but he, they're getting some he's nice reps in here early. Unbelievable, Jalen Brown. He's it was a good bounce back. Yeah, bounce right. back for him, and it bodes well going to Game Five at home. Let's hear from you guys on Twitter. Hashtag the starters, true or false, with all three of those two-two series as we head into some pivotal Game Five. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Up we next, get it. the Pelicans <laughs> sweep has people talking. Do the Blazers blow it up? We'll debate that more in the upcoming report. Welcome back to the starters, right into the up down report. Let's see those thumbs on Twitter. Hashtag the starters, thumbs up or thumbs down. First one, guys, the Blazers feel good season. It ended in a depressing fashion on Saturday when they were swept by the Pelicans in their first round series. AD 47 and 11, Drew Holiday 41. It was the Blazers' 10th consecutive playoff loss. And Coach Stotts, well, he might be on the hot seat. A lot of people are asking this question here today. Are you guys up or down on the Blazers? Blowing it up. Moving on from this, switching things up. Down, down, down. Yeah. Explain. I think you got two guys going into their prime in McCollum and Lillard. It's do you believe that they can get better? And I think they do. And I think that they like playing with each other. And it's sort of like a Raptors situation, me with DeRozan and Kyle Lowry. Find another way to play, move off the ball, and maybe move on from Yusuf Nurkic. And hope Zach Collins gets better, but it's it's just a it's a tough rebuild because they've got so many guys mm -hmm. signed. Mm. You're getting bad for a lot of years if you do this. I, I do believe that they can find another way to get better. I mean, it's two guys in their prime. You just don't give talent away like that. Yeah, it's a guards league, and they have two really really good ones. And even teams like the Warriors and Raptors, they needed another piece before their great backcourts really popped. Right, Draymond. If he never becomes what Draymond becomes, are the Warriors as good as they were? The Raptors were ready to tank until. Mm. Lowry and DeRozan kind of figured out, oh, we're actually best friends and we play really well together. You never know what's going to happen in the next couple of years. And like you're saying, Tass, Evan Turner, Mo Harkless, Myers Leonard all signed through the season after next. Those guys are going to be hard to move without getting off Lillard or McCollum. Yeah, they've got 112 committed to next season, 100 million committed the year after that. So it's hard to say how they're going to blow that up. Someone has to take on those contracts for them. But also, you can't just look at the season and say it was a, a failure. Even though they got swept as having home court advantage against the Pelicans, they got totally outplayed by the Pelicans. But that was a good season. They were good defensively. They have improved. So there's something to build on there. It's just a matter of now trying to move some parts around a little bit. But uh, I wouldn't look at this season as a complete disaster for them. Well, let me follow up with this. If you can't get rid of the players mm. because of some contract situations, do you look to get rid of the coach? Or do you think Coach Stotts is a solid coach and deserves to keep going with this team? Uh, I think he deserves another chance. A, a bit like the Raptors with Dwayne Casey a few years ago when the Wizards swept him. Masai Ujiri stuck with him, gave him another chance, and they've improved. So I think Stotts has been there long enough to say, 
let's, let's just forget about what happened in the playoffs here and let's try to run it back next season. I think he deserves at least the chance to get it right. It was about a month ago that we were saying, is this guy, this guy in the conversation yeah. for Coach of the yeah. Year? He was in the conversation just a month ago. We're taking him out now just to yeah. move on because they got surprised by some sort of defense that Damian Lillard says he's never seen in all of his years mm. playing basketball. They got months to figure out how to combat that now. So I think that uh, Terry should come back. No Speaking doubt. of conversations, maybe Terry Stott's got to pull a Dwayne Casey. Go have some conversations in June, like Dwayne did last year. <laughs> That's right. He met Kyle Lowry, met DeMar DeRozan, met all the guys, and said, we got to play a different Possibly. style of ball. And they need a third guy to facilitate. They thought it was going to be Evan Turner. It was not. It, hasn't hasn't been, it has not yeah. been. All right, moving on here. Yesterday, Manu Ginobili delivered a throwback performance to save the Spurs season. The 40-year-old Ginobili scored 10 of his 16 points in the fourth quarter to help San Antonio beat the Warriors 103-90. The Spurs avoided a series sweep, and they set up another must-win game five on Tuesday. Here's the question though, are you up or down on the Warriors winning in five, AKA the gentleman's sweep? Mm. Is it a go? Yeah. Is it yeah, a go despite the Spurs picking up that game for win? I guess yeah. so. I, I, I'm not ready for this to be Manu's last game potentially. I hope he comes back. Uh, he was fantastic yesterday. The crowd full of the Argentinian uh, shirts and mm -hmm. flags and they're mm -hmm. chanting, Manu, yeah, Manu, Manu. He's got to go back for at least one more game in San Antonio, hopefully one more <laughs> season, but uh, I don't But you got the thumb up. You're I saying know, he's not going to get another I chance mean, this year. I'm, I'm just saying my heart is saying I hope <laughs> yeah. to see him, but my head is saying the Warriors are going to finish it off That's in five. That's a pretty good way to go out, though. Even if he does retire after this season, it was pretty cool to see all those Argentinian fans out there. And it was surprising to me. I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but... Him and Tony Parker have now won 132 playoff wins together, the most of any tandem in the league now, in, in league history. Shouldn't be surprised, but that's also a cool stat to yeah. have. Yeah, and when you look at this from the Warriors' perspective, their, their opponent is already set. They've got the Pelicans, so they want to get out of this series as soon as they can. Don't take on any more injuries. Give Steph Curry a little bit of time to heal up to prepare for the Pelicans, because like we said earlier, they surprised the Blazers. Yeah. They'll probably try something similar with Steph coming back off an injury. All right, let's see those thumbs on Twitter. Hashtag the starters. Thumbs up or thumbs down on both of those cues. Got to take a break. When we return, it's the playoffs, but that doesn't mean the whoopsies stop. Yeah, new edition of Weekend Whoopsies coming up next. Go looking for that air ball. Starters is brought to you by Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey, official partner of the NBA. Welcome back to the Starters, where it's time for some weekend whoopsies, hoops, and bloops. DeMar DeRozan has become known for this now, I think. Mm -hmm. He rocks it. He does it well, the fake high fives. Yep. Maybe it'll be called pulling a DeRozan someday. Mm. Ghost what an honor. Guys. Bradley Beal, feeling it on Friday night. Knocks down the jumper, then he's like uh, <laughs> well, interested in the snacks that we got in that basket. Mm. I guess he was feeling a little hungry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. Put it in order for popcorn, yeah, apparently. Yeah, got some popcorn, yeah. had the munchies. Trying to sneak it in behind the coach's back there. It was April 20th. <laughs> oh, no. Yum, yum, yum. Yeah. Not being too sneaky. No, no, no. no. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> He Hungry likes his guy. popcorn, man. It's all right. Leave him alone. It's a healthy snack. Yeah. The players usually have to answer the tough cues, but Chris Middleton and Yanis turn the tables on this reporter. You got to call me Jabari, Jabari earlier today. You sure about that? <laughs> he's the guy. He's the, he is the yeah, guy. Yeah, he's the guy. He's the guy. <laughs> Can't fool them. Yep. Dwayne Wade going in for the finish. It comes up a little short, but I like that he turns into the Jumpman logo here. For a second. Yeah, if you're gonna miss, add some flair. Exactly. Great Beautiful. likes. Great likes. True Holiday and Anthony Davis. They don't want to answer the question. Hey, <laughs> you're the floor general, now you're the news conference general. That's fantastic. Uh, on Saturday, Rockets Wolves. Harden comes Whoa. up a little bit short. Yeah, keep your eye on Carl Anthony Towns. He goes looking for that air ball. <laughs> That's a good move. Where to yeah. go? This is gonna take off, I think. <laughs> the air ball search. Gotta yeah. go find it. Fun. Uh, Really good. Carl Anthony Towns, unfortunately, on the other end of a whoopsie here. Oh, is that an air ball? <laughs> Somebody had to do can the look. Find, uh, can you find that? Probably went to another town it was that far. Down. Very weird moment here. David West, he ended up getting a technical because he got up with some gusto from the Warriors bench and went to the stationary bike. But it made what? it seem like he just got a tech because he was riding on the stationary bike. It was very confusing. No gusto, yeah. mate. <laughs> oh. yeah. 
Uh, Victor Oladipo, unfortunately, oh. tries to throw down that dunk with a little too much gusto, I He's think. He's too fast for himself. I yeah, think. that type of game for Vic there. Oh, yeah, get in there. Man. Right. And finally, God bless Lance Stevenson. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. I love, I love how he questions the ref on this. I mean, what? So that's good. a travel, I know. It's uh, <laughs> the Westbrook-like travel. I guess he got away with it, didn't he? But not Lance. Sorry, Lance. All right, when we return, Lily has a very, very controversial solid play. We'll show you this after the break. Forty games and 40 nights, Rockets Wolves, game four. Houston leading that series 2-1, followed by the Thunder Jazz. Utah up 2-1. Westbrook said he's going to shut down Rubio tonight, so that's something to watch. Both those games on TNT. We asked you, who's the best mean mugging mentor? Giannis, mean mugging last night. Trey, you got a few of the best answers. Yeah, I got some great suggestions. Alex says, Prison Mike. Look at that tough guy. Mike says, Reggie, AKA Redman, back in the day. Ooh, Mike Goldfarb submits Michael Phelps, a classic moment from the Olympics. How about PJ Rose, back in the day, <laughs> giving the stank face? Matthew agrees. Russell Westbrook, the correct answer, got great stank faces. Matthew says, How about Kyrie Irving? He's pretty good at it. Ron Mexico goes with John Wall, a classic stank face. And Lori submits her son, Quartz, who's honestly pretty good and pretty tough. Wow. Get a kid to teach you how to mean mug. They're the best at it. Ah. <laughs> All right. Lily. Yeah. ESP, man, what's happening? So we're going to Milwaukee. Uh, now, the fans have been clamoring for a defensive, very solid play. So here's a double ender okay. from last night's game between Milwaukee and Boston. Chris Middleton gets the steal, then the ball fizzes around to Malcolm Brogdon in the corner. But just before coming on air or an hour or so earlier, Ooh. the uh, last two minute report said that was actually a foul on Chris Middleton, uh, which no. I guess voids this yeah. as a very solid play. We're yeah. going to have to go to Joe Borgia for clarification. <laughs> so, in the meantime, that's a tentative, very solid double ender by the Bucks. Okay. <laughs> Let's get Joe Borgia on the phone and ask him about that double ender. <laughs> Tomorrow, it's Tuesday, <laughs> Starters Twitter show. Join us live at 11 a.m. Eastern, live on Twitter. Always blast. Get your questions in right now. Hashtag the starters is the best way to do that, or at the starters as well. Just direct message us if you want. We got some fan signs here. Yeah, the first one comes from Billy, and he's with his friends Alec and Drake. They're at the uh, Bucks game against Celtic. That's Look a that great a sign. Brilliant sign. <laughs> really good sign. Keep, keep them coming, guys. Uh, and we have another one, too. Okay. Uh, and it's from uh, old Jasper and Laura in Germany. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Great uh, German fans, obviously not at the game, yeah. but the best they could do. All right, Richard Jefferson will join us on tomorrow night's show. We'll see you then. Great news, thanks for joining us. And uh, avoided solid play, am I right? <laughs> Race tonight, right. people.